Welcome on back in for the second half of our fifth season here at Iowa State in our Dynasty Day series here on the Ultimate Sports Network. Early on against the visiting Sooners, we nearly get an interception in the end zone there, but they'll end up settling for three. This is a matchup of two top ten teams here, so we know we're going to get one heck of an effort from this Oklahoma squad. They're able to get the ball back after a quick three and out from us, and just like that, here in the first quarter, they go up 10-0 early on that long run from quarterback Cedric Skinner. Bouncing back almost immediately, though, we're able to find Harry Mudd on that 30-yard dot from quarterback Plummer's crack that does get us right back into this thing. Following that up on the next drive here, it looks like it's going to be Pickle Rick, one of our well-known defenders on the back end of things here. The safety comes through with a clutch interception for us. Here on offense, though, we aren't able to convert it into a touchdown, and we are forced to settle for a field goal as well. Fast forward to midway through the third quarter now, a very similar route to the one you saw earlier to Harry Mudd, but this one's going to get picked off this time by the defender. Man, he read that that thing like a freaking book. Oklahoma back on offense here now, and they're starting to move this ball across midfield. We got to be a little bit worried. They line up to take this field goal, and luckily for us, it does miss just right, but it did have the distance. Just lucky for us, it didn't go through the uprights. Now we're going to give this thing to Goro Ketchy here on a third and 11 play that doesn't quite work out. We bring out our kicker, Childish Gambino, for a big time kick, and the man comes through in the clutch. Now we get a big stop here on third and two. They're forced to settle for a field goal yet again. With just over a minute remaining in this game, it's important that we find a way to get this thing back in field goal range. The screen pass to Carl Winslow gets us up near midfield here on the following play. Plummer Track is going to be forced out of the pocket, but finds a little bit of green in front of him. Gets this thing across the first down marker almost all the way down to the 35-yard line. A little bit later on this drive, Carl Winslow sets it up in the middle of the field. Childish Gambino in to win it, and folks, it's a walk-off win, and what a win it was unbelievable game we take out the number 10 team in the country and continue our winning ways five victories in a row now our next opponent on the schedule here is Oklahoma State they've had a rough season up to this point currently standing at one and eight on the year it's plumber's crack here early on the road showing you what he can do with his legs once again nice touchdown right there we get a good breakup here on defense to keep them from getting a touchdown of their own they're forced to settle for a field goal we do go three and out after getting the ball back but we pin them down here inside their 10 yard line and a couple plays later their quarterback looking around to find an open receiver and he cannot it's going to be Douglas Havoc with an awesome interception right there really setting us up with some great field position they do however make a great defensive play of their own and we are forced to go for a field goal here as well we are back in front by a full touchdown now it's going to be that DB that you know so well anonymous making a big interception right there and now Harry Mudd translating into a big big grab downfield all the way nearly to the 10 yard line now on second and seven, Daquan Garcia, the backup quarterback, is checked into the game temporarily, but he finds a receiver, Michael Jordan, for the touchdown. You got to love what you're seeing out here from this Iowa State team early in the day. Another turnover, this time by linebacker Corbin Dallas, and it seems like our defense is just having a dominating performance out here so far. Carl Winslow showing you what he can continue to do on the ground as he gets that one across the 50-yard line, and now here a couple plays later, Beef Tip's going to get it down inside the five. We go back to Goro Akechi, who goes in for one of his couple rushing touchdowns here on the year. We end up tacking on a field goal not too long afterwards. And here with just a couple seconds remaining in the game, we ice this thing completely with another touchdown to Beef Tip. Solid win by your Cyclones. We got Baylor coming up here next, folks, and we're back at home in Ames where everything just feels good right now. We've won so many games here lately. We're starting to actually feel like we're due for an L, but hopefully this will not be that matchup. Baylor 4-5 and five on the year, struggling a little bit to this point, but they aren't struggling here early with that nice touchdown pass to Todd Price. Carl Winslow does bounce that one in for six. We'll take that. Thank you very much. What a season for this running back, but it don't matter right now because Baylor's not looking at the record. They're not thinking about the fact that we are the number four team in the nation. They're just trying to pull off the upset out here, folks. Nice throw right there. It's going to be Brandon Hudson going across the middle of the field, coming through in the clutch for these Baylor Bears. On a crucial fourth and goal, Robert Edwards is able to hammer it home for his first touchdown of the day. Give a little bit of credit to our fullback. Now 
a rough tackling effort there from one of our DBs leaves us in a vulnerable position. But as usual, Plumbers Crack says, leave it to me. I'll take care of business taking this one all the way down the field. Nice little flavor on the jump over the pylon there as well. Baylor does come right back down the field and tack on a field goal of their own. But on the ensuing kickoff here, you know who it's going to be. That man, that myth, that legend, Goro Akechi, putting on the Jets and leaving that entire special teams unit in the dust. I mean, what this guy has done for our return game all season, you just can't give him enough credit. Plumbers Crack rolls way out to the right on this one, folks. Finds his guy, Robert Edwards, the fullback, with a 47-yard grab there. You're not going to see that every day from your fullback, but what a play. Following the massive catch by El Chapo Guzman, Robert Edwards gets this one into the end zone for his third touchdown of the day. What a career day for the fullback. Give him some credit. Speaking of multiple touchdowns, Todd Price gets his second receiving touchdown there for the Baylor Bears, and they just won't go away. But now here late in the fourth quarter, Carl Winslow trying to salt this thing away, and he does with a big-time 44-yard rushing touchdown. They would tack on one more touchdown of their own here with that reception to Kyle Clark, and then somehow managed to get the ball back here, but not really do much of anything with it. We get the big-time win in front of the hometown crowd, and that one, folks, feels real real good we've got kansas coming up now here folks we are visiting beautiful lawrence on a sunny day late in the season here and it's got to be uh one of those games where you really show folks what you are made of goro akechi has been an absolute monster for us all season long he's got freaking players on kansas state special team unit just tripping over one another they can't even keep track of which way this man is going kansas would respond however shortly after that with a nice rushing touchdown from lawrence workman tight end harry mudd would chip in with a five-yard reception of his own right there, now putting us back in the lead for the time being. After a weird-looking play right there, the routes were kind of crossed up with one another. Kansas is forced to settle for a field goal. They would end up getting the ball back, however, here and taking their first lead of the day. And just like that, this home crowd has got to be a little hyped up right now. I mean, they got some faith in this squad, but not for long. It's Robert Edwards. We saw what he could do last game with a 47-yard reception. This game, he does it with a 37-yard reception, allows us to get a field goal up on the board they come back have to settle for a field goal once again themselves now here with a little bit of time left in the third quarter plumbers crack looking downfield for a receiver but he can't find one this is not looking good right now folks the Jayhawks firmly in control of this game a field goal here early in the fourth quarter gives them a six point lead but man just like you always do where is that miracle maker his name is Goro freaking Akechi and put some freaking respect on it because what a freaking play 102 yards to the house and just like that we are leading here once again Kansas would not be done yet though as they continue to work the ball down the field here it's going to be going to the end zone but no it's Sean Christian jumping in front of that one right at the goal line what a crucial interception with two minutes remaining here we are able to find beef tip on that nice little slant route gets open tons of space out there for the guy and he was just fine Kansas however makes a massive play here folks before it's all said and done we do stop from getting into the end zone but right now Martin Finch got to be really happy with that effort you got Lawrence Workman finishing it off once again here they go for two and tie this thing on up so freaking ridiculous are you kidding me how are the Jayhawks hanging around in this game Michael Jordan on a big third and three conversion there gets us onto their side of the field but will our backup quarterback Daquan Garcia be able to get us in field goal range he's looking for the open receiver downfield he somehow locates Harry Mudd Childish Gambino comes out and for the second time in our last few games our field goal kicker saves the day and give him some credit what a freaking victory a tough fought game and a hard earned w here now for the regular season finale against kansas state we are back home in front of these freaking cyclones fans they're ready to go nuts man we haven't lost a game since week three against alabama the record right now is nine and two and we get a huge goal line stop here to start that gets you all types of pumped up plumbers crack rolling out to the right finding his receiver harry mudd not really sure how the tight end found that much space out there but we end up converting it into a touchdown a couple plays later with our guy carl winslow now here on this play a fancy looking throw from kansas state's quarterback they're able to convert it into a touchdown from matt woodard from three yards out and we've got a tie game here folks once again going to the air plumbers crack under throws this one a little bit his intended receiver michael jordan just couldn't quite make a play on it unfortunately kansas state makes a great
great interception. Their quarterback now looking across the field here. Speaking of great interceptions, we jump right in front of that one, and it's going to be McCoy now with plenty of space in front of him, but will they track him down? Yes, they will. There's about 30 seconds to go until halftime. We pitch the ball to Carl Winslow, and this man goes to freaking work. What a play right there. But we got to ask all you Kansas State fans, do you believe in miracles? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you might have dialed one up. What a play right there. The reception by wide receiver Chris Moody ties this thing on up right before halftime with zeros on the clock. Here to start off the second half, though, Goro Akechi clearly took that personally, goes back on out here and lays down the beat down with a big time return right there. We're able to bounce back with yet another interception. This one goes to the man anonymous himself. Will he have a chance to take it all the way back to the house? Yes, he will. What a play. Give that man some freaking credit. Chris Moody continues to make contributions with his second receiving touchdown of the day. But speaking of guys who are known for making contributions at this point, it's getting a little bit old because Goro Akechi, this might be the best dang kick returner you've ever seen in your life, takes it back to the house once again and no folks I assure you that was not a replay from earlier in the game they do bounce back getting a touchdown of their own beef tip here on second and 11 gets as close to a first down eventually Goro capitalizes on that one and punches it in for a short rushing touchdown Sean Christian has already forced an interception this game now he creates a fumble we're able to jump on top of that one and with just over a minute remaining here Carl Winslow is now looking to close this thing out completely I truly have no idea how he was able to avoid all of those defenders but unbelievable effort here 54 yard rush from Carl Winslow typically we wouldn't show you a punt return this late in the game but you know Goro has to be going to work if we're showing this thing to you and once again just faking out everybody on the special teams unit 350 all-purpose yards for the guy four total touchdowns on the day give that man his flowers and just like that Cyclone Nation we punch our ticket to the Big 12 championship game against number 17 TCU. You might remember we played these guys earlier in the season. The Horn Frogs did not fare too well against us, so they're probably going to be out for revenge. We got to be ready for them to throw everything and the kitchen sink at us right now. But here early in the game, this man, Plumber's Crack, finds a little bit of an opening, finds his receiver downfield, and Robert Edwards gets us down to the two yard line. We're able to convert that into a touchdown a couple plays later. Now it's going to be TCU bouncing back. What a freaking lethal stiff arm on this one from their QB, Nick Coleman. Coleman fakes the hand off on this one keeps it himself is going to find a way to somehow bounce this thing into the end zone the guy just cannot be tackled now here we're going to get a field goal on the following drive putting us back up 10 to 7 for the time being on third and 12 they make a somewhat questionable decision to run it right there and it does not pay off Carl Winslow has had big plays on big plays all season long and no surprise right here he comes through with another one what a run by the stud running back now up 17 to 7 here on second and Nine, gets us an easy first down we're able to pound this thing in with Robert Edwards on the ground the fullback has really been a big factor for us here now it's going to be Nick Coleman surveying the field here looking for an open player but he can't find when we get the tackle they are forced to settle for a field goal here and with not much time remaining in this one now we head to the fourth quarter folks it's going to be Plumber's Crack has a 14 point lead rolls all the way out right throws all the way left this could be a big mistake and of course it is not really something you want to do throwing across your body like that into a dangerous dangerous area it's okay though folks because we do end up getting the ball back here after a missed opportunity by them Goro Akechi has shown you what he can do and once again he puts it all on display not even sure how he found the open space on that punt return but now we're up by 21 Carl Winslow says you know what let's make it 28 and TCU folks is officially in big trouble Mr. Winslow would end up tacking on one more touchdown at the end here but that will do it for the day folks guess what the Cyclones are big 12 champions and let's celebrate a little bit I mean come on give it up for coach Frank give it up for the crew look at that beautiful trophy coming back to Ames Iowa with us man and the fans are freaking pumped right now and who can blame them because Iowa State is headed to the CFP folks and in game number one here we're playing in the Rose Bowl versus Alabama number two in the nation the rolling tide took us out earlier in the season so we've got revenge on the mind and here early we're able to force them to go for 
Alford on fourth down, but they do convert with an interesting looking pass there to Amir Alford. They managed to get the ball back here, get a huge run downfield and convert on that one. And folks, just like that, it's already 14 nothing here. And we really got to slow down and steady the ship. Harry Mudd chips in with a 40 yard reception. Unfortunately, the drive would stall out a couple plays later and we'd be forced to settle for a field goal. And now here it is, Marlon Kirk taking that one in on a 12 yard reception. And this is a bit of a lopsided game. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, they force a huge turnover right there. They move down the field. It's going to be Seth Williams on the reception from about a yard out. It is El Chapo Guzman here on fourth down. We decided to roll the dice. Probably should have settled for a field goal. Bit of a risky idea there, but it did not work out. They're going to come back the other direction now. Another huge catch, but luckily for us, we somehow forced the strip. Finally get a break out here on the day, but already in the fourth quarter down 28-3. to three. It's not looking very good right now. Beef Tip does get that one up near the 50-yard line. Goro Akechi eventually slams that thing on in for a short rushing touchdown. Now they've got the ball back here on a third and 10. They aren't able to convert after punting it back to us. It's going to be on Plumber's Crack here to find a receiver. And does he? Oh, he does. It's that man, Michael Jordan. You know what he can do. The athleticism from that kid is just ridiculous. Beef Tip helps get the first down. We end up converting that into a touchdown of our own a couple plays later on a run. But no, folks, it's not going to matter if we can't find a way to get two scores here late. Plumber's Crack trying to lead his team back to the miracle victory. Beef Tip downfield tries to make a little shimmy, but it doesn't work. And now with just over 40 seconds remaining, Daquan Garcia rolls out to his left, takes it himself, the backup quarterback trying to carry the squad down the stretch. We're going to go for two, try to make it a three-point game. And we do that successfully, but with very little time remaining now, we have to recover the onside kick. Unfortunately, we do not get it back. We're going to go down in this game. We're not going to get a chance to go to the national championship. And what a tough way for this otherwise incredible season to come to a completely heartbreaking finish. As always, I want to thank you guys tuning in for season five here at Iowa State of our Dynasty Days series. The team looked like they had the makings of a potential national champion, but just couldn't get the job done there against Alabama down the stretch. Good news is there's still more seasons left here under Coach Frank O'Reilly at Iowa State, so we'll have plenty more action coming your way here soon. If you enjoyed the video, always feel free to drop a like or a comment. And hey, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the page while you're at it? We appreciate that a ton. Thank you again, guys, for tuning on in and supporting. And that one thing we always say, class is in session. Yeah.